So we're back with a brand new episode of Walking and Talking with Tim. And today's guest is my friend, Gina DeMarco, who is the Director of Development at Joseph's House of Camden. Yep. I got it right. You did. See that? Every <laughs> once in a while, I get it right, right? So Joseph's House of Camden, tell the viewers, our viewers, what exactly it is you guys do, because it's really cool. So Joseph's House of Camden has existed right in the heart of Camden on Atlantic Avenue um, for, geez, 12 years now. And we provide emergency shelter and services to the most vulnerable populations within Camden and actually its surrounding areas. Good stuff. So in addition to providing emergency shelter, we also offer food services. We have a shower on site, a laundry on site. We provide toiletries. And then the best part and the most unique thing about Joseph's house mm -hmm. is you? we also... <laughs> I'd like to think no. Um, but honestly, what the most amazing thing is, is our programs. So we have what's called a community hub that really addresses the underlying issues of homelessness and poverty. So if you come to us and you are struggling with mental health, you're struggling with drug addiction, we have professionals in place that can immediately start working with you to respond to those things. And you pull people in right away, like right off the street. So yes, we have people coming to us every day, but we do have an intake process because we wanna make sure that Joseph's House is in fact the right fit for you. Right. For example, if we have a pregnant woman who comes in, which does happen um, frequently, right. we're able to connect them with a Mommy and Me program because that's gonna be a significantly better program for them. Right. Or we'll have veterans come to us and we'll refer them out to the Veterans Association. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and then children. So we're not, we're not set up for children. So we make sure to refer them out to places that are best for them. So if a family comes in, that's a separate issue. Correct, yep. Gotcha. And so you, you, you did mention to me that you have, um, there's 25 people that work there, right? Yeah. About? <laughs> yes. That's, that's, that's a pretty big crew. Yes, plus two cats. And I was just going to say, <laughs> you beat me, so you got two new employees. We do. And they happen to be cats. They are. Explain. So one of the things, again, we're always seeking to enrich the experience of our guests at Joseph's House. And one of the best ways to do that is animals. Everybody loves animals, right? And animals are so wonderful, so loving, and it gives our guests something to look forward to. And so our guests have honestly two gravitated. Little, two little stress relievers. <laughs> yes, exactly. And they really do, they absolutely love them. And what's really cool is for the added benefit of helping keep our rodent population at bay, because again, we're inner city, right? Yeah. So mice are an issue. And just the scent of the cats alone has helped tremendously. So everyone is happy, myself included. Nice. <laughs> yes. So so let, let's let's shift right to you and your family. So you said, <laughs> speaking of cats, you have three. <laughs> yes. That are fifteen. Yes. Yeah, so um, my my two oldest girls, Piper and Lucy, are fifteen. Yes. Um, and then their <laughs> younger sister, as we like to call them, Zoe. Um, she is thirteen. So wow. yeah, she's my little house panther, my black cat. So three cats and you've got three sons. I do. 12, six, and one. One cat for each son. One cat for We'd each have son. have a new one. <laughs> and, 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 and you've got a, you know, a baby on the way. Yes. And so you're gonna have to get another cat. Gonna have to get another cat. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a dog. Maybe a dog, time. I was just gonna say, maybe a dog this time. I like that idea. Yeah. I'm a big fan of dogs. Um, so you said that you um, you have been married to your your, hu your husband Chris. Yes. Now for about two years, right? Yeah. And you guys, um, like you said, three sons and one on the way. Yep. <laughs> and you and your family are, are from North Philly. Yes, correct. And you told me that mom and dad. You said dad's from is it Winslow? Winslow yeah. And I, oh, I got this. I think <laughs> Winslow and mom is from Northeast Philly. That's correct. And so they actually met at Clementon Park, which is so cool it's true. because because <laughs> Clementon Park, I, I, I know it well, you know, <laughs> my company, we spent a lot of time there. Um, I love Clement Park. It's a really neat place. But you said they were on some sort of like trip, right? So my mom was a teacher at the time and she was on a field trip with her students. And my dad was working a ride called the Salt and Pepper Shaker. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who remember that, that was my dad's. He was operating that ride. Hey, right. And he took one look at my mom and was like, I like her. That's it. 
And so we slipped a note to one of her students. Oh, jeez. And that was... What, there was no cell phone? <laughs> no you couldn't text? Phone. Carrier pigeon, smoke signals. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how they met. And they started traveling across the Tacony palmyra Bridge to see each other. Wow. <laughs> And then landed in, in North Philly. Landed in North Philly. And now they're out in like said Abington or something, yes, right? Yes, correct. How about that? That's cool. Yep. And you and your husband live in Barrington. Right in Barrington. Yeah, yes. So we talked about things that you like to do when you're not working. Yes. Let's get into let's get into that. <laughs> so you said you like to write, you like to mm -hmm. blog, you like to hang out with your kids. So I do. let's talk about what is your blog? <laughs> So my blog is... Where is your blog? <laughs> where's my blog? Out in the ether somewhere. Um, so I handle issues of um, art. So I, I am big into Catholic sacred art. Um, I was doing a lot of Catholic education for a while. So things of that nature. <laughs> so you went to La Salle, you said? I did. And you said you also traveled abroad. I did. You studied so, abroad a bit in uh -huh. Ireland. Yes. So I was just telling you that, you know, um, somebody that works for me, mm -hmm. uh, works with me, her daughter actually just went to uh, Ireland and went to Trinity. So you were saying you went to different places Beautiful. in Ireland. Mm -hmm. How was that? What was that like? Oh, that was incredible. So we actually went um, on the heels of, this is going to date myself a little bit, but it was right <laughs> on the heels of when uh, President Clinton had done a lot of things over there. And yeah. the Irish people, regardless of what happened in America, Irish people love President Clinton, <laughs> like they love that man. Um, and so everybody that we were talking to basically just wanted to talk to us about right. American politics, which is insane to me. Right. Because again, over here in America, at least at the time, that's not something that anybody did. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> so I always kind of felt like a deer in headlights when folks would ask me about politics, because I'm like, I don't, I don't know, like, I'm glad you guys like them. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. I was so totally uneducated at that time. But that was what they loved. And, and the reason that I chose to study in Ireland and why I love the Irish culture so yeah. much. The beer? Is, <laughs> just, just so fun in. fact, I don't actually <laughs> like beer. I always hate to admit that because everybody's That's like, crazy. <laughs> I like wine though. I wow. like wine. Did um, you try the Guinness at least? I did, but they serve it warm over there. Oh. Which just makes it even weirder. <laughs> um, but so um, the reason I went to study and why I loved it so much is their writing style is so different from anything American, right? Like you look at Oscar Wilde and the man is just brilliant in the in his wit. And that is something that the Irish are known for. Mm -hmm. Their wit is just incredible. And even the way that they write their newspapers and their articles and their media. Right. We here in America, we like to pretend that we are, you know, <laughs> we, we, we're trying to be fair and balanced, but right. everybody knows that we're not, right? In Ireland, they don't even put on pretenses. They're like, this is the way it is, and we believe this, and that's just how it is. And if you don't like it, go go to our, you know, separate news station. <laughs> and so I always appreciated it. I always thought that was really funny, and I wanted to learn more about how direct their style was. And that's why I was over there. Very cool. Yeah. So, but you did say that your favorite vacation was St. Louis. Yes, it was. Even though the only thing you really said, it sounded like the only thing you really did was see the Ark. And, and then got on the, a helicopter. And, and got the crap scared out of you on a helicopter because <laughs> you said you, you, you made a, a deal with Chris where you took him to the, um, what was the building? So the cathedral. the cathedral. He took me to the cathedral. And and you went on a helicopter yes. tour with yep. a glass bottom. <laughs> yes. For a, a, girl that's bottom. Afraid, a girl that's afraid to fly. That's hysterical. Gosh, I was terrified. <laughs> and I felt like, because they should have warned you that there was a glass. Who does that? Who wants to see what's, you know? <laughs> A lot, not fair. a lot of people do that. So they make glass bottom Ooh. boats, right? Terrifying. <laughs> it's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. You somehow survived, though. It's okay. But even though that was your favorite vacation, you told me that the coolest thing that you've done was cave diving yeah. and what was the other thing? Repelling. And repelling <laughs> in Jamaica. Well, oh, that was so, Mexico. Uh, um, yeah. I'm sorry. Mexico. I don't know why. I'm thinking Jamaica. That's because we talked about me going to Jamaica. I went to Jamaica, too. It's okay. Yeah. So, so Mexico. So Explain what cave diving is, because I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting for me too. It was the first <laughs> time I'd ever done it. Um, so what they do is they take you out into these gorgeous, I mean, you're right in the middle of the nature in the jungle. And I believe the proper term is cenote. Um, so it's these underground caves, right. but the only way to access them is by swimming through an underground tunnel. Mm -hmm. So again, you better hope you don't get lost in that <laughs> tunnel because you're screwed if you do. <laughs> 
So we had a really good tour guide. Um, we swam through the tunnel and when you come out on the other side, some of them have like almost like a skylight at right. the top, right? Um, this particular one did not. In fact, it had bats and a whole lot of them. <laughs> But that was fun too. So it was it was honestly really really nice. And so that was so fun. afraid of heights, but no, no no afraid to fly, but not afraid of heights. So I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm kind of the same way actually. But um, uh, your other passion was homeward bound. Yes. So yes. let's let's get into that just for a touch. So homeward bound is um, it's a it's a pet adoption center. It used to be Camden County Animal Shelter. Um, now it's homeward bound. They changed their name in twenty. Oh gosh, I'd be lying. 2018, I think it was. Which is where you get the ladies and, ladies and pulleys, right? <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> and so what I um, what what Homeward Bound is known for is being a the largest non-kill shelter in, in South Jersey, That's actually awesome. in the tri-state area. Love that. Yeah, so they do intakes of about 5,000 annually, uh, up to 6,000 at one point, and their save rate is over 92%, which means of the animals that come in, 92% of them. That's a big number. That is, that's huge. That is well above benchmark um, for animal shelters. Bravo. And what's really cool about that is what folks don't realize is as a county animal shelter, we have to take anything that comes to us, right? right? And so if a dog shows up who has been hit by a car and badly injured, obviously we're taking that in and doing what we can to save its life. If we have a hundred litters of kittens, which does happen, um, <laughs> comes in in the height of kitten season, we have to treat them and find right. places for all of them. And when we get, this is always fun, we have an intake yeah. area that's open 24 seven, that's access, accessible by animal control. Right. They come at three in the morning and we open up that door at eight when we arrive and it's like, what am I gonna find? Sometimes it's a donkey, <laughs> sometimes it's a chicken. One time it was a snake. I was not a fan of that one. No, nope, nobody likes snakes. No, no one likes snakes. Not and me, one anyway. time it was a Clydesdale. They yeah. couldn't even put it in Go a kennel. On. It was too big to fit in the kennel. So they just stuck it in the in the, like center aisle and it was tethered to one of the kennels. A Clydesdale. Clydesdale, can you imagine that? No, I can't. It's always like Christmas walking in there. It's like, what am I finding today, friend? crazy um sheep sometimes goats goats very often you'd be surprised how many goats are in south jersey <laughs> um and then pigs lots of wild pigs in camden bet you no one knows that <laughs> i bet you no one knows that you know you also said you have a a, a passion um to also um be active in the autism community as yes well. so my oldest son vincent he's 12 years old and he has autism and there's just and he also has something called sensory processing disorder spd for short and so what that means is his nerves in his body mm -hmm. act as one-way streets instead of two-way streets like it would be for typical individuals, neurotypical. Um, his act as one-way street. So if I touch Tim's shoulder like this, Tim's brain tells him, Gene is tapping me on the shoulder. If I tap Vincent on the shoulder like this, he may or may not feel it. Hmm. Um, sometimes he doesn't feel it at all. Sometimes he feels it so strongly that this could feel like I'm shooting him with a gun. Oh gosh. So it's just, it's a disruption of your nervous system. Right. And it can also affect your auditory system. And so whereas it might take two, actually I think it's like 0.2 seconds for sound to travel from your ear to your brain to process so right. that you can then respond to that stimuli. Yeah. It takes Vincent three times that amount to process what he hears. Wow. So, um, because of those things, I've obviously done a lot of learning and digging about what those are and how to best help him adapt to a world that doesn't understand these things. Right. And I've been really active in trying to educate others as to what those things are. And I've certainly blogged and written a few news articles um, regarding those things. So I just like to advocate on behalf. And Vincent's so brilliant. He's such a smart, <laughs> wonderful um, kid. In fact, won first prize, first place last week in a Minecraft competition. Nice, go Vincent! <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of him. He learned uh, JavaScript coding. Oh, cool! Yes, yeah, so I'm very, very proud of you, buddy. You did awesome. <laughs> awesome stuff. Yeah. So, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? So, by all means, feel free to hit me up at Joseph's house. My email is G for Gina, D for Demarco at jhoc.org, gdjhop.org. And you guys have all kinds of social media, right? Facebook Absolutely. and all that. Absolutely, Facebook. Um, we're on LinkedIn. We're trying to start up an Instagram. And uh, yeah, but we're most active on Facebook. And we also have a weekly newsletter. Feel free to sign up for it. Lots Great. of good stuff. Awesome. 
Well, so thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun as always. And to you guys, thanks for following. Follow me on Instagram. Keep on walking. Keep on moving. And we will see you next time on Walking and Talking with Tim.